Welcome back to Gig Harbor Paddling. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about why our paddling athletes spend time in the weight room. Here at Gig Harbor Canoe and Kayak Racing Team, I love to send athletes out to find strength coaches because strength and conditioning is one of my joys and I see how it benefits athletes. I see how it holds them together through such stress and so they don't get injury, but I also see it how it makes them stronger so that they can produce more power and force. And it's another way to condition them so that they do have that speed endurance that we need that sometimes can't always be made on the water just day after day after day. That's how a lot of overuse injury happens and burnout. So, this is Coach Dimitri. He's somebody that I met through the strength world that a lot of our athletes have been outsourced to as he's their strength coach. And because he has learned so much about the stroke on his own volition and how much he loves to help the kids, we have actually hired him to be a paddling coach. So he has a little bit of both worlds and I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you like to train athletes that come to you from our sport. So in strength training, we're trying to infuse as much muscle mass recruitment as possible in the movements that we did decide for their workouts. So the top four come to mind that everybody knows barbell squat, the deadlift, the bench press, and then an overhead press. There aren't very many movements that recruit that much muscle mass, so we train them in that order to get maximum results in their training strength cycles. After that, we move into what is commonly known as a conditioning phase or more cardiovascular endurance. Those exercises differ greatly, the weights on those exercises differ greatly. And we move into things more so like pull-ups, bench row, bench press for time. These high intensity interval training basically takes them to a lactic acid threshold which very much simulates paddling for great distances of time for longer bouts of time like a minute, two minutes, five minutes, half an hour if they're going to do anything longer than the races or sprints. So we move them into that bracket as they come closer to regatta season because strength training is just it's just not meant for speed it's meant for power so speed training comes into play what you're seeing here is basically a standard for lack of better terms a workout of the day it's very popular in the crossfit realm but basically what it is is they are doing timed intervals of specific exercises for time or rep count and they will go through this for a number of rounds, a number of reps, depending on the workout of the day and what we're trying to target for that session. These are pretty much infinitesimal with the amount of variety you can place. The sporadic nature of these exercises can get the kids and have a little bit of fun while they're also working very hard, get a good sweat on, work on their cardiovascular conditioning and expose them to long-term athletic development that leads into better race performance. So I am a powerlifting coach, strength coach. I often work with a lot of post and pre-op patients in barbell rehab and I've been doing this. Barbell training actually saved my back so I dove headlong into it. It was the only thing I found in the fitness world that actually fixed the problem. I didn't want surgery so I went and found a way to fix it myself. I got a good coach, learned so much, and then I started to continue to learn. Like every sport, you're gonna come across injuries. Injuries are bound to happen due to the competitive nature and the drive of these kids, or any athlete really. So also injury prevention, um, prehab is what we call it. So we, we teach them how to stretch, do good mobility work, kind of alleviates most of the aches and pains. Um, but when injuries do happen, it's, it's being with the, uh, the athlete until the rehab is done. Um, doing the best that we can to offer our, of course, opinion. Um, we ask them, there's things outside of our wheelhouse that we tell them to go and see professional help for. But the big part is just getting out in front of these things. For overuse injuries for sports like paddling, we tend to see a lot of hip issues uh, for our kayakers, uh, shoulder issues for the kayakers, uh, back issues for the canoeist, lopsided development for the canoeist because they're a one-sided athlete, so they tend to bring their own world of injuries up out of each uh, style of paddling. 
So predominantly, at first, they will do a strength training cycle, which they can't produce the entire year because the stress levels are too high. So what they'll come and do, they'll do some basic movements, squat, deadlift, bench press, bench row, pull-ups, stuff like that, to build up their overall strength for moving through the water. <laughs> Having injuries, uh, it's pretty much Parn. <laughs> what are. Okay. No, I got it. I got it. Okay, I just, got I just, it. Let me just. 